Hello, everyone out there in internet land. Welcome to another episode of the Red Hat Open Shift Twitch stream. I am very, very, very tired this morning, but I am very, very, very <laughs> excited to welcome the one and only Christian Hernandez. Oh, the one and only, yes. The one and only. <laughs> That's what I'm calling you from now on. Nice. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Christian and I are going to be talking about GitOps today. And I actually have the uh, honorable position of starting first because um, GitOps and DevOps kind of have a great tie in, and I'm kind of known for DevOps. Um, but first, before we get any further, let me introduce myself and let Christian introduce himself. I'll go first. I'm Chris Short. I work at Red Hat as a technical marketing manager. I've been on the Ansible team, and now I'm on the OpenShift team, and I have done DevOps since 2011, uh, and uh, I'm very happy to be here today with y'all. Thank you. Christian. Yeah. So um, as Chris Short said, I'm the one and only Christian Hernandez. I'm also a uh, technical marketing manager. I'm actually on Chris's team. Um, and I, uh, I've been, oh, DevOps has been around for a while. The buzzword has been around for a while, but mm -hmm. yeah, like it was around, around 2010, 2011. Yeah. Um, when I, I really started getting into it, um, I come from an ops background, so I came from the other side. Usually DevOps starts from the dev side <laughs> and pulls right. the ops in. I actually started from the ops side and I thought, Hey, this, this is actually the way we, we need to do things. So, so, and I'm kind of the same way. My background before joining civilian life was very much in the ops world mm -hmm. uh you know getting packets from one place to the other be it from computer yeah. over satellite to other computer kind of thing right like so for me devops was kind of like oh i just took these things and kind of plug them into the right place and i actually have a talk that i do uh that's titled what the military taught me about devops Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of the practices that we did like kanban boards we didn't call them kanban boards but we we had them. Yeah. They were, our, you know, regular status boards. And what you could do in any given facility is walk around to the status boards. You know, they were dry erase boards at the time, but they eventually upgraded to, you know, TVs. And yes, you could get a general idea of what was going on in the facility. Um, and be that facility, be it like a SATCOM facility and Intel processing facility, whatever was happening, you could see it happening and you had an understanding live. Yeah. Um, and that, to me, uh, giving giving people that access to the 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 status was huge, right? And so, uh, you know, eventually we saw everybody has a status page now, right? Like everybody needs to get out to their customers exactly what's going on with their service. So that I think is a very very you know like esteemed thing that's come out of DevOps, right? Yeah. But let's let's kind of get back on track here. Yep. And, you know, so you mentioned uh, DevOps was buzzword kind of 2010, 2011. So I have an official definition of what is DevOps, right? Like I wrote this years ago, uh, actually last year. Oh, um, <laughs> we'll open but, up the dictionary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but like, <laughs> here's the thing. Uh, part of the reason I wrote in this definition is because mm -hmm. uh, everyone left Ghent in Belgium. So the first DevOps days was in Ghent, Belgium yep. uh, in 2009. And everyone left Ghent knowing that DevOps didn't need a definition. It would mm. define itself as what DevOps was. Yep. Fast forward 11 years. <laughs> we still really don't have what definition of what DevOps yep. is. Yep. There's still a lot of confusion about what DevOps is or does, or is it just culture stuff, or is it just tooling, or is it you know something in the middle? So, you know, my definition of DevOps was very, very uh, scientific, right? Like DevOps is the professional practice of frequent, continued, and iterative improvements through measurable changes, the goal of which is to become a high-velocity organization, thus improving business outcomes. Now, that's very, very scientific, and there's a lot of background behind that, and I can share the link to this in the channel real quick. Um, but I don't necessarily like my definition as much as I like someone else's. Um, Emily Freeman wrote a book, mm -hmm. De DevOps for Dummies. I actually have a copy of it. Just approved everyone. I actually have a copy of go. it right so here. So not a printout like Jason's. Uh... Not, no, I didn't print out a page, right? Like <laughs> yeah, I yeah. have and actually, you actually have the book. I have the book and actually I think Emily signed it too. 
Oh, look at that. Where we at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She even signed it. So nice. Um, but her definition, I think, is way, way better. Mm-hmm. And it's way simpler. Um, so I was looking for a video before this call and earlier this morning. She did a video about the definition of DevOps, and it was illustrated by, you know, the if you've ever been to a DevOps days, you've seen the uh the the live illustration type stuff yes yeah yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. White, the whiteboard so, thing yeah like it's it's yeah the the person drawing like what the person is talking, is about, talking on, about on the board yeah. at the same time so emily got together with that person and made a wonderful video and i can't find it to save my life like i, I can't find it on youtube i can't find it anywhere but it's it's like four minutes of what the definition of devops is and it's very simple and it's very very uh embraceable but the 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 industry wide definition does not exist, right? Like I think yeah, yeah. DevOps, uh, the way Emily has defined it, is the right way. Um, but the industry has kind of said, well, then now there's DevOps tools, and now there's DevOps, you know, orgs, and now there's DevOps teams, and there's all yeah. these different ways to do DevOps, and that's fine. But uh, you know, check out Emily's book check out emilyfreeman.io her website she's got a lot of good stuff on devops and what devops is and so forth so on um but with that being said what is devops devops to me is measuring uh what you're doing what changes you're making to systems and then uh aligning those changes to goals right so if our goal is to a increase revenue well what changes can we make to decrease the bottom line, right? Like mm-hmm. if, if it is consolidating uh, around um, better solutions, right? Like if you look at dimming and talking about like sol- sin- losing your supply chains, you know, like trimming those down yeah, uh, or, you know, any kind of practice like that, any kind of goal that you need, like align your IT organization towards that goal and become a learning organization that does things proactively as opposed to reactively, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So I think that is where GitOps comes in. So if you say, okay, DevOps is all these things and it's, and it's you know, it's pushing towards this high velocity organization and it is a cultural thing and it is process changes and there is some tooling mixed in. Let's just go ahead and say it's like people process and tools for now. Mm -hmm. What, you know, what we're kind of missing from the, the DevOps toolkit is like a great way to do DevOps, to implement DevOps. And yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like we have, we have the, a philosophy, right? We have the philosophy down. Um, people are starting to get it. The philosophy is out there. So, what does the practice look like, right? So, what, what, how do we, you know, we have, we have what we think it is. We have the the philosophy behind it. So now, okay, well then, now, now, now we're at the tooling phase, right? Like, right. what, what, what's, what's the tooling behind it now? Like, how do we get to the point where we feel like we have? started down the road of DevOps, right? Like mm-hmm. we're doing the DevOps. We're, how do we get there? So we know we need to embrace some cultural changes in our organization to think a little differently, but we need a process and we need a set of tools to do that. And GitOps, in my opinion, is also a practice or a way of doing things that forces you to cho- choose certain tooling. And along with that, enforces a process that is very DevOps aligned, if that makes sense. So when you look at GitOps as, you know, Git is a single source of truth. Everything you do in Git triggers some kind of action, be it in dev stage or production potentially. And then having that sole source of truth being the way things become automated and then go out to their various environments, to me, that sounds like the holy grail of DevOps, yes. right? Like yes. I check in something one place, right? Like my sole source of truth is Git. And then things happen as a result of me checking that in based off programmatic things that I've said at the beginning, let's do this. So that's where I think, Christian, I think you're going to come in and kind of maybe show us the GitOps way of doing things and explaining that a little bit better to us. Yeah, so um, 
yeah so by the way great great introduction chris um i, I think i think that was a a, a perfect um overview of you know dev devops and how you know in, in segueing that into uh, into get ops because yeah so you have git which is um like you said a, a single source of truth it also um um, gives you since you're using Git, it also gives you a convenient audit trail of everything that's going on, mm -hmm. right? So you're you're not only um, making changes and continuously um, delivering those changes, you are you have an audit trail of what's been going on in your environment, right? And you, you have, have unique unique IDs for that each step in that audit trail. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You have a unique ID. You knew exactly who did what at what time. Change advisory um, board. This is what happened. Right? Yes, ex like, exactly. <laughs> ex ex exactly. Here was the state of our environment at such and such date at such and such time here. Um, and this is why, right? Because you have the um, you have change. Um, you have the review, right? So you have uh, the review that goes on in Git. You have all these tools already built into Git. And um, and the yeah. idea was, it's like, well, why don't we just like leverage Everything that's already built into Git, like uh, yeah. all the all these tools are already built into Git. So, um, and now, um, and now you have the the, uh, the the tooling, right? That's that's starting to bubble up around it, right? So, I think right. a lot of the tools um, nowadays. Well, before um, we had uh, things like like Puppet, right? Like Puppet and Chef, um, and then Ansible. later on, Ansible came yep. came along, right? It has the the idea of you have um, um, you have a, a declarative approach, right? It's like this is this is this is what I what I want um, my end state to look like, right? This is my end state. Yes. Um, Let's declare and, what this is. Yeah. This. Yeah. I. I want. I, I don't want. Uh, this. It's the idea of like the set of instructions versus um, a set of facts, right? Right. I want. I, I. This is how I want my cluster to look like. This is how I want my deployment to look like. Um, and um, having those tools. Um, create that change, right? So, um, as as we talk about the declarative approach, right, that kind of lends itself to like the Kubernetes framework, right? The how, yeah. how Kubernetes does things, right? Because Kubernetes, um, Kubernetes does exactly that, right? It has the um, a declarative approach, and it has that control loop, right? It has the uh, the you know is do you you know is there a pod running? Yes or no. If it is, if it is, it does nothing, and if it does, it reconciles that, right? So there's that right. reconciliation, right? Um, and so, um, and so, yeah. So, so I think this is a good segue to show quickly, I guess, what I have here. Sure. In terms of demo, um, doesn't have to be fast or anything, but you know. Walk us through. Walk Take us time. through. That's right. We have some time. <laughs> no pressure here. Do I have? I always need to choose the right. See desktop whiteboard. Oh yeah, yeah. The That's zoom. Choose the pick the right. Oh, am I right? Oh, am I about to show the world something I don't want to show them? Here yeah, we go. I don't know. Yeah, here I we go. We'll All right. I see a wonderful, wonderful OpenShift uh, dashboard. Cool, cool, cool. So, um, so yeah. So I have this. I have this repo, right? So it's, 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 it's as with everything. Um, get off starts with get. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. It's, it is the foundation, <laughs> so, right? Like, let's not forget that. Like, yeah. So, and the reason um, that is is because Git has become the de facto uh, software version or version control for software, right? Like, we had back in the day, we had Subversion and CVS and Mercurial and all these things, and Git has kind of coalesced to become the number one. You know, everyone has a Git repo somewhere kind of thing, right? So that's yeah. why using Git as a foundation makes the most sense. It is the yeah. common tool amongst everything. So um, actually, we have a, a question in the chat. That's not actually hmm. a, a good thing to uh, to bring up is like, well, the first time do you when you set up a cluster, um, do you export all configurations to be exported to Git? The answer is yes, right? So the, yeah. the, the, the idea is yes, like, you want to one of the one of the the biggest advantages to GitOps is um, so not only the uh, um, you get the the whole uh, DevOps experience and you get the the audit trail and all of that, but you get to um, quickly recover, right? So you quickly recover from um, uh, from like catastrophic failure, 
right Be because everything's already defined right so you just redeploy that um and um and there's there's questions about um configurable crds and options and I'll, i'm gonna go through that um yeah yeah yeah, is, yeah i'm gonna go through uh, that stuff but but just in in general yeah you basically export all your configurations right you explore all the configurations into um into git so um but coming back around here um yeah you start here with git um and it's just so i have a, a simple example of this application right um I have uh, a deployment definition, right? So the deployment definition, let's see, uh, let's take a quick look at it. Let me make my screen a little bigger. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so that way you don't wanna, there we go. Um, so yeah, I have this uh, deployment configured, a simple, uh, it, it's very simple deployment definition. I have a, a, an image I'm deploying, um, setting of the replicas, the labels, just kind of anything norm you would normally would do uh, for any Kubernetes cluster. And this application here uh, takes a variable, right? So this will um, this will uh, this this is this is kind of an image I use for like blue green deployments, and I just um, and basically draws either a blue square or a green square, right? And that's that's that takes it in as a variable. So for this particular um, repo, I have one. My, I set my variable to blue, right? Because I want to see a blue box. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the namespace as well, right? So the namespace, you know, I need to have a definition for the namespace. So literally everything needed to everything is application, defined. Yeah. Everything is defined here. Um, I have um, service, right? Same thing, service, uh, nothing special here. I am um, uh, exporting the port. Port 8080 mm -hmm. is where my application is listening on, a simple web app. And um, a route, right? So for uh, since it's an OpenShift cluster, um, uh, I'm setting up a route, right? Um, you can set this to, to an ingress point if you're yeah. using um, ingress. ingress definition, yeah. whatever. Um, so this is essentially this is a, a minimum configuration, right? It kind of right. just um, uh, shows gets us, gets us our app in the cluster off and running. Yep. Yeah. So um, by Oop, I went back back. So the um, so th this is nothing special in that I can just like feed this into um, any Kubernetes cluster and it'll it'll pretty much like run right like right like you could apply these files right now. It'll yes. Just go. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but then there, there's the idea of like okay, well, like how do I um, how do I make sure it's um, it's the version I want it to be? How how do I how do I make sure no one goes in and makes a change to my deployment, like changes the the, the scale, um, you know, because once you change the scale, um, then, you know, it, it's different than my what I defined in my Git repository, right? So this this is the the idea of drift, like how do I detect drift? And um, and how do I how do I reconcile that, right? Because Kubernetes job is only to reconcile what what you tell it to. But what if what you so what if someone else tells it to do something, right? It, it'll do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right like it, it it'll do it and what if you don't want it to do that right what if you always want it to sync there so um so i have here uh, a cluster right and uh one of the many tools that are out there there's there's a lot of tools um um tools to do a, uh, what they call a continuous delivery right i want to yeah. be able to uh deliver my application so um, let's take a step back just in case uh, um continuous delivery yep. is the idea of our changes happen as often as we need to make them and then uh we hit some kind of approval step to like push them out to prod right yeah, yeah whereas continuous integration is okay all these steps are here and available to get applied i'm just going to automatically approve like once they're approved i'm automatically pushing them out the door like i think yeah. that's the it, well that's it, the disconnect there's a lot more to it but well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well that's why it's like 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 you have like the ci right is where right where I am um, iterating con continuously, right? I'm just like, you know, making changes, making changes, making changes, like you said. Um, delivery is actually like, you know, 
once 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 you once you um, make an update, right? Once you make an update to your application, you can make as many updates as as, as you want, but that doesn't mean you're delivering all those updates all at once, right? So, right. Um, that's why they're using. You use you always hear CI CD like in kind of combined, right? Like, yeah, but and they're, some they're organizations embrace things. one or the other, right? Yep. Like kind of to simplify things for them, or based off you know whatever compliance reasons or regulatory requirements they have. You know, a lot of organizations will embrace CD. Uh, yep. and, mm -hmm. and just be like, okay, here's our, you know, final review step. Here's our release process. Go, you know, and then yeah. the checks the box. That process checks the boxes for the regulatory requirements. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so, you know, before we dive too deep into this, there is a question in chat and I want to address it and we can pick it up later maybe. But, you know, is there a good discovery mechanism for what's already in your cluster or what's already deployed right now right like how would i get all that into my GitOps like pipeline repo to begin with yeah so there's um um uh, there's actually a really good article uh written by i believe the folks over at weaveworks mm -hmm. about how to how to export um essentially um your cluster right okay. and it's and it's and it's just using on uh, native tools um you know, if, if I can go over to like my CLI and I do like, um, um, you know, like OC get uh, like routes, right? Let's just take mm -hmm. that for example. This is, oops, I do a dash A for all namespace. So this is my routes for all namespaces. Um, I can just do dash O YAML, right? And this is, and this is in YAML format, all my routes from all my namespaces in my entire cluster. It's everything. It's everything, right? So, um, and and the article actually goes uh, goes through pretty pretty well. Let me try and find it while you're yeah, going yeah. through that. Yeah, um, yeah. So that way you can p paste that into uh, mm -hmm. paste it in the chat. Um, it goes through how you have to prune some of this, right? So like the creation time span, uh, time yeah, stamp. Yeah, you, you, you have to you have to prune some of this stuff because some of these things um, um, won't apply, right? Because when you create a new cluster or when you're restoring a cluster or whatever. Some of those things aren't aren't going to apply, and some of these things are um, injected into the um, the 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 manifest, mm -hmm. either by Kubernetes or some sort of mutating webhook, right? Like if you're using something like Istio or something, um, it, uh, things get injected that you don't really need to define. That it's just um, um, it, it's it's just apply, uh, assumed, right? It's assumed right. by Kubernetes is going to apply some of this, um, and you can actually see that um, in my uh, definition, right? Like if I go to here, my route, um, mm -hmm. there is, uh, I set my creation time stamp to null, right? Because it's, I'm not going to, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to set a creation time stamp. That's going to be set by the, by, at, by at the runtime, cluster, yeah, right, by right, the cluster right. itself. Yeah. So, um, and you can go through that and you essentially go through that at, um, um, object by object, right? Um, there's, there's no convenient way. There's no like, you know, um, you know, like kubectl export cluster, you know, right. like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. wouldn't right? that be cluster great? Dash o -yaml. Like give me See, all the YAML out of this cluster. Yeah. Like so dump this... <laughs> everything. Yeah. Give yes. me everything. Yes. I'm a, I'm a submit a pull request, right? Yeah. Now. Honestly, you're right. Exactly. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'll plus yeah, yeah. Give me the give me the link. I'll I'll, I'll thumbs up that. I'll, I'll plus one that. Because <laughs> because this would be actually be cool. Um, it would be cool. I mean, to be honest with you, yeah. it would be useful to me, right? Like if I were a new yeah. employee at a company, you know, or like running clusters, right? Like I would love to see this and be like, I know what red flags look like. Let me go find those. I know yeah, what yeah. you know. Like let me find all the services that I need to meet. Make sure are being you know logged and you know protected yeah, correctly exactly, and evaluated yeah. for security reasons right and you know i would want to see all that stuff right and that you know my not my normal sysadmin toolkit is nmap right so yeah 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 exactly, i can't yeah. nmap <laughs> my cube cuddle right yeah, like if yeah, i could exactly yeah like i would want to dump the, yeah this isn't a terrible idea i'm sure there's a lot of reasons why we don't do it in kubernetes land but you know the thousands of APIs you'd have to hit. The time it would take to gather some of this data. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it could take a while, but <laughs> yeah, it could take a while. But um, the, yeah, I don't know. Let's. I'm still if, trying to find this article too from WeWork. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's it. I'll, I'll if, if I find it later, I'll I'll, I'll post in the chat. Um, yeah, thanks. The um, yeah, I I remember I came from a startup as a lot of people uh, did before I, my life at Red Hat. 
Yeah. Um, and we, we actually, you know, you grow, right? And you go through the growing pains and mm -hmm. we actually hired a couple of network admins, right? Like we finally had like guys like going out for the networks and like the first two months, three months, maybe it was just them mapping out the network. <laughs> that was yeah. just like they, they were they were just yeah. trying to like figure out where everything was and where is everything give yeah, me a yeah. good inventory <laughs> so yeah, same so. thing in kind of the ansible space right like i if i were and i've done this before it i forget how many organizations i show up i say all right uh let me see what all i've got going on here and like i the first thing i do is start building a solid ansible inventory of all the systems that yeah. i'm uh -huh. going to be touching so and like how to get that inventory, how to assemble that inventory, yeah. how to figure out what's in your purview and what's out of that purview is often difficult. But I would always start with, hey team, we need a solid Ansible inventory before we can do anything. Anything, yep. Right, like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, we could we, we could say, okay, you know, here's an NTP service or here's, here's services we know we need as we discover these systems that we need to apply, but, yeah, like we have to start and assume that everything is unmanaged and we have to discover everything now. Everything, yep. Everything new and put that in the inventory and have that managed. Bingo. And um I'm actually glad you 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 brought up um uh brought up Ansible, right? Because um one of the tools I'm gonna be using um is there, there's a lot of there's a lot of GitOps tools that do uh, CD right. Um, there's mm -hmm. there's uh, there's Flux CD right from the WeaveWorks guys. There is there's Argo CD. The Cole guys, um, the guys over at Coles, um, came up with something. Um, if, if anyone in the chat can help me out, um, it reminds me. It's kind. Of, <laughs> I keep calling it pneumonia, but it's not spelled. It's not spelled like it. It just looks like it's spelled that way. <laughs> um, <laughs> So if, if if any guy if if anyone knows um uh oh yeah see it's called um uh it's a Greek word uh, uh omnia omnia I don't, so I, don't I mean can you blame I mean there's no p but I mean can you blame me that I, I can't blame I, you I can't <laughs> blame you for pneumonia no that, that it says pneumonia um that they're they they have it's it's um uh, similar technology. Right. And, uh, and you can do it with Ansible too. Um, right. So I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be using Argo CD, but it, it, you don't necessarily need to be using um, Argo CD or even Flux or you, you, can, you can use Ansible. You can use Bash script. Um, yeah, like anything but, could be this component, right? And yeah. I yeah. think that's the important the, thing to point out. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to be using Argo, but um, yeah, I, I want to point out that it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not the only tool that you can use. Right. And it's, it's, um, I'm going to try as, as, as much as I can to focus on the process. Mm. Um, but, um, <laughs> someone in chess says, don't scare us with this name. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. good point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, good point, yeah. <laughs> Let me look it up real quick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, here we go. So, Copy. um, um, so yeah, so the, just, just the idea is, 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 uh, it's the process. Try to try to focus on the process. Um, although a lot of us, here at Red Hat, uh, we love Ansible. Um, we there's a there's a small cult, cult following for uh, following for Argo, mm -hmm. um, but it's th and this... Argo came out of Intuit, I believe. Correct, the guys. It is Intuit. a CNCF project. It came out of Intuit. Yep. Uh, and we've worked with them quite a bit on it, I think. Yeah. So we we actually worked um, a lot on the operator. Mm -hmm. So the the operator is still considered community because. Um, you know, it's built by the community, although mm -hmm. most of that community uh, that built the operators from Red Hat, we still have to label. Uh, well, we have a funny relationship at Red Hat, right? It's like, well, this this is built by Red Hat. Why isn't it supported? Well, it's technically a community project. Like, this isn't right, like, like an we official help somebody build it. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, you know, so there's, there's before before we scare anyone out, let's just scare anyone yeah, yeah. off. OK. Uh, <laughs> It's a Greek word, right? Like, evoia, uh -huh. evoia, euvoia. I can't get the Greek pronunciation right. I'm sorry. Uh, a minor Greek goddess of law and legislation. Her name can be translated as good order, governance according to good oh. laws. Yeah. So perfect. this is actually perfect the perfect name for, name for such a project, yeah, even though I can't me. say yeah. it. 
if someone from Cole's yeah. technology can like send me the phonetic like pronunciation, that'd be great. Yeah, phonetic pronunciation, <laughs> that'd be that'd be great. <laughs> How um, do I say this in a time of COVID nineteen? Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because yeah, I don't want to say pneumonia. No one wants pneumonia, pneumonia right now. No one wants pneumonia. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, well, someone someone mentioned that I think Argo City and Flux are merged. So, um, so yet yeah, kind of, yes, sort of. Yes Go and ahead. no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the, um, the guys over at, at Argo and the guys, um, uh, over at Flux, right. Uh, which is a, a Weaveworks project. Um, they, they're also in the CNCF, uh, Fluxes. Um, they, um, they decided on their own, right. It's like your tool does a lot what our tool does. How about right. we don't duplicate a lot of the effort, right? So, um, they yes, they have diff, they have uh, not so different. They're different ish, different enough um, mm -hmm. end user experience, but the core is the same. So what they what they came up with was something called GitOps Engine, yes, which is basically you 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 think of it as a shared library, right? So they're going to be working on this little shared core, as it were, mm -hmm. um, and then from there the the tools. Um, are gonna branch out to the respective end user experience. Um, the long term goal, yes, being that it's gonna be a tool to rule them all. Um, but um, yeah, that's still very, uh, very, uh, yeah, very early on in, in the stages. They have great goals. They have great ideas, and it just needs to happen, right? Like it's just a matter of time yeah. now. So yeah, they announced it. I think very late last year uh, that. Or not late, but definitely like October ish, November ish. I feel like, um, no, yeah, that was, they were like merging like, efforts. Because I remember covering it in my newsletter, and I was like, "This is going to be really cool once this like gets up and running." Uh, and yeah. the reason we're using, I think, part of the reason we're using Argo CD right now during this demo is because like this isn't fully baked yet, right? Like to a mm -hmm. point where we yeah. want to show demos of it, if that makes sense, right? Like it's almost there, but not quite. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's uh, I I remember um, I was doing a, a presentation on GitOps, and like the night before, I had to put in a slide. <laughs> I edited my slide because oh I, yeah, I was like, they, oh, like they just announced this. Yeah, yeah, they announced like oh okay. I hate it when well, that before, like, I guess I'm I hate it when that happens. About it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> something yeah something changes, and you have to like okay, well how am I gonna I'm gonna Someone is going to raise their hand in the crowd. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, blah. exactly. Yeah, so I had, to, I had to read the press release. Um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, that, that's um, so uh, for, for uh, so, Sa yes. Sack and Cloud? Satch and Cloud? Yes. Satch and so Cloud, they're, yeah. They're, 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 not, um, they're not merged. They're, uh, they're just working on a working common, together, common core. Working yeah. together, yeah. Working together. So, um, duplic uh, not duplicating code is always good, so. Um, yeah, I mean, time. if you got similar groups with open source projects with you know the same goals, they should work together. It's all about collaboration, right? Yep, it's all about collaboration. So um, here, uh, yes. So I have. So um, so I'm gonna install um, Argo CD, right? So that's this is this is where um, um, this is where you log into your cluster, and just like with anything in OpenShift, um, and I know this subject's uh, near and dear to your heart. Chris is that um, we install it with an operator, right? So yes. Um, so ev Why everything do do that? you know, you know, everything everything in uh, in OpenShift is installed with an operator. So um, we have operators to install operators. Actually, I learned the other day. We even have cool. operators installed. Yeah. So that's the the, the CVO, <laughs> right? The cluster version operator. We have yep. um, operators that install operators. So. Um, so before I start here, um, I'm just going to create a project uh, to house this. Right, I'm just going to call it Argo CD, um, just to make it simple. And then I'm going to go to the uh, operator hub. And then hopefully this is a 4.4. I think I think I ordered a 4.4. Um, you I can't order 4.3 um, anymore, by the way, if you were. Oh, OK, cool. If I did the R, yeah, I went R H P D S though. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, so here when I type Argo, it gives me two choices. So uh, right off the bat, this will I'd probably generate a lot of a uh, um, uh, lot of questions, right? So mm -hmm. um, it had like the the Argo CD and then Argo the Argo CD operator with Helm. So uh, someone asked about how to do, um, uh, you know, how do, how do I how do I variableize 
you know, my, this, this is a way to do it. Right. So right. this is a, a way to, to deploy and sync your Helm charts, um, with your cluster. Um, I'm going to be using customize. Um, I'll go over that, uh, when we get to it. So I won't be using the Helm one. Um, and this has a little community, little community badge right here. And it gives you a little warning that, Hey, by the way, this is community. So if you want your support, you go over to those guys yep. at the, um, you know, at their, at their GitHub. Right. And I just click install. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna install this Argo CD and the alpha channel. Um, cause obviously this is alpha stuff as, as, as Chris short pointed out, it's, um, this is all, this is all stuff is just all, all new. So, um, and then, um, so this approval strategy, a lot of people ask me about this and this is more, has more to do with operators, but, um, the approval strategy, meaning that, um, uh, for your upgrades. So mm -hmm. I think if you hover over it. Yeah. So, um, if you have over, over it, it tells you, right. Um, right. So the, uh, yeah. Um, if you're, if you're worried about like this thing breaking your infrastructure and you want to manually upgrade it. Yep. Does it click manual? Yeah. Do manual, mm -hmm. manual upgrade. If you, if you, if you're like, you know what, I want the latest and greatest, just give it to me whenever it comes out. Automatic's fine. Um, Automatic a lot of people works. like living on the edge. So, so, uh, well, it's not necessarily I'm, living on the edge, right? Like <laughs> if you, uh, when you, could you actually hit cancel and go back to the install page? You know where you click install. Oh, on the operator. Yeah, operator yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I like making you back up here. No my worries. bad. So, like, if you yeah, right look at this page, right? Like, you see the capability level, right? Like, this does all five capabilities of that capability ma matrix that we put out here, right? Like, it'll do autopilot. You know, it'll manage itself, right? Yeah. Like, it'll manage yeah. itself and manage its resources for you. So this is designed from the ground up to be completely like auto contained and self managing. You just feed it what you want it to do. Yep. So, you know, doing automatic here makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, you're just trusting that the community operator is going to work. That's it. Yep. And then yeah, so I'll I'll hit, I'll hit subscribe. Yeah, sorry, so, sorry um, for the uh, re segue. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no worries. So the um, uh, when you hit subscribe, so this is like well, well, what happens, right? Um, is is Argo installed? So the answer is no. <laughs> people, <laughs> people are like, well, I installed the operator, but nothing happened. I'm like, well, that's true because because just, the operator gives you the option to install operators. Correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So you you installed the ability. Right. So you just installed the operator, the the, mm -hmm. the the thing, the basically it, it's a, a CRD with a um, uh, with a whole lot of logic built into it. Right. So right. That's a very. It can the, give you things, but you have to ask it. What correct? Yeah. Yeah. So if you go here, uh, like if you go to workloads and you go to pods, uh, you'll only see the Argo CD operator pod. Right. Right. So and this is just the thing waiting for instruction. Right. Like I'm waiting to spin yep. up X Y Z kind of deal. Um, so there's a, what can there's we a lot do of things here? You, yeah. What can we do here? Right. So there's a lot of things that you can do, <laughs> um, you know, spit, uh, give it, you know, the, an application so you can actually have it start and we're just creating applications for you. Um, mm -hmm. you can have it to create just a, a, a project for you, or you can just, you know what, just give me an entire stack of Argo CD and that's what we're going to do. Right. So, yep. um, give it all the well, stack. Give me everything, right? Because right. so here, this gives you um, uh, a uh, kind of a manifest that you feel. So this is your your custom resource, right? So this right. is this is how Argo City is going to be deployed. And I'm going to cheat a little bit because um, you have YAML. Yeah, I have pre 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 existing YAML. I, I, I know I Eric Jacobs. Er, Eric er, Eric's never happy when you pre. <laughs> he wants everything. Every, everything should be done live. live, but YAML in public is like math in public. I feel like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like if you. So, yeah, like um, I would never yeah. have gotten the spacing right. Like the second you start throwing pipes and brackets at me and YAML, yeah, it's like, you're like it. You're like it's over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, let me lint this. Yeah, exactly. So let me uh, let me just paste this and I'll go over what it's doing. Right. Um, let me make this a little bigger as well. Um, Thank you. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. So for the for those for those who have the large monitors, um, so here just kind of just standard metadata stuff, right? Like um, this is Argo CD in the name in the namespace Argo CD, um, but the the spec stuff is what 
um, where all like the magic happens, right? You can just you can really start thinking about automating some of this stuff. Um, when I say the, uh, I want to say, hey, give me a route, give me an Argo C route because I want to see the web UI, right? I'm not going to do everything from the command line. I want, I want to be able to see the UI. Um, this Dex connector is actually really cool. Yeah. Um, it yeah, actually, yeah. it actually plugs Argo CD into OpenShift's OAuth, right? So this is very, this is very powerful. You, you don't. Um, this does a lot of sentence, work for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this does a lot of work for you because leveraging OpenShift's RBAC system and its OAuth for Argo CD um, is really, really cool because then you can start delegating um, not only you, you can either delegate like you say, all right, you take have Argo CD take care of the entire cluster or just give it to a team that manages their own namespace. Right, um, and I right. Think like you can say powerful. Uh, you could say like this team of infrastructure folks now have the capability to do Argo CD on this one project. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So it's um, so yeah, so it's 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 cool. It's actually a shout out to um, uh, to Andrew Block from the um, Red Hat Community of Practice. He's also a consultant. Oh, okay. Um, he he wrote he wrote this. Yeah, he wrote this. By the way, he he wrote the the connection, um, mm -hmm. and uh, he actually. He actually writes a lot of uh, things that become so the the Quay um, operator. He wrote that and basically yeah. gave it. He gave it to Red Hat. And now Red Hat supports it. So like he he's, he's doing a lot of cool things. <laughs> he does so, so much um, stuff in the background. It's yeah. So, so cool. if, yeah, yeah, it, he does, and he does it on his time off. So Andy, if you're uh, if you're on, yeah, um, if you're on, or you you're on, this just, later. Thanks, Thank you yeah, so much, chat, buddy. Uh, shout out, <laughs> shout out. Um, and so um, so now that we uh, connecting Dex. Uh, on the back end with the OAuth. Um, now I'm going to set up some default policies, right? So the default policy I'm going to set is read-only, right? So anyone logs in, they're just going to get uh, read-only. Okay, cool. Um, that's default policy. Unless you're a cluster admin, right? So here I'm setting a policy of saying, if you are a cluster admin on OpenShift, right? System cluster admins, I'm going to map you to the admin role on Argo CD. So that's this is, this is where you start doing... Um, the mapping so you can obviously yep. you can start imagining you can have some pretty uh pretty complex policies here um and then i'm oh, scoping yeah. it down to the group to group level so um because i want to manage it by group so um so if you guys um want to know where that is uh where is argo cd argo cd it is uh yeah. proj right proj. yeah is it proj github uh is it here no there's an operators uh user guide operator operator manual maybe that's what it is no oh. it's this is a bunch of fun stuff by the way argo proj uh there is so what i'm looking, what looking for, for by the way you looking for the, the authorization stuff no, I'm looking for um, how I got these options, right? Because mm. like the, the question is like, oh, how do you know to put all this? So I'm like, it's it's actually in the docs. I just need to find it. Um, <laughs> it is in the documentation. Um, da, 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 user guide probably maybe. Uh, oh, there's a search. Oh, hello. Hi, search yeah, bar. Uh, are, you, are you better than some other search bars out there? Yeah, let's see here. Cluster bootstrapping. Coupler bootstrapping, Helm, no, no, no. You guys are going to see all this later here. Um, upgrading user guide, developer guide, user guide. I would think it would be under user guide. Um, oh, there we go. Someone helped me out in chat. Thank you. Oh, wow. Thanks, buddy. Your your Google Foo is... Um, way stronger. Way better than mine, yeah. See, so, that's why I was asking, because I knew about this RBAC page. I just didn't know where it was. Yeah, see yeah. here, there you go. Yeah, so you have the this, <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, so all right, so yeah, so you can get um, um, uh, pretty granular, right? So it's like I want you know, DB admins for applications to be able to create in the staging, so like you can, you know, you can get pretty, uh, pretty, um, uh, yeah, pretty granular can, with this. You can get so. super granular, right? Like, yeah, I want, yeah. I want Christian to be able to deploy this pipeline, but not this this pipeline kind of deal yeah like yeah i want to be able to people to if you view it um people to edit it create override sync update so yeah it's it, it's 
it's um it actually gets pretty hairy um yeah. pretty quick right <laughs> Arbeck is hairy in general right like yes, Arbeck and yeah. Kubernetes oh, yeah. is not for the yeah. faint of heart it's just i mean i i kind of equate it with i i i a m because uh -huh. it is just as granular and just as uh you can put your foot in it as possible <laughs> yeah yeah exactly as the, you can go yeah you can go hip deep on this stuff yeah um, so anyways thank you uh for for your google uh um, yes please yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for joining today and thank yeah. you for your google foo so uh so yeah so once i click create um this will go through righteous phases um pending installing right uh we can actually watch the paint try a little bit here if you go to pods Please. and um and uh and, and see these uh containers creating right so this is the what we're actually waiting for is the last one to come up is the argo cd dash server mm -hmm. and that's the one um when it's running it'll um well we can't log in until dex is up and running so um because we it's can't log in. i mean it's, the web it's a series of yeah. steps it's declarative right Yep, like you, yeah. you, you, you got to let it work and then you can work with it. Come on. It's uh, like watching paint dry. There it is. All right. Ta -da. Cool. So, ta -da. so we're in, right? So we're in like Flynn. Um, so let's go to networking routes and this will have the Argo CD here. Um, so let's accept the cell sign certificate, accept the risk. From RHPDS, yes. Yeah, so we don't use, so just for the audience's edification, like we can use some Let's Encrypt stuff on our clusters, but it kind of slows down the deployment a, yeah. a smidge, like a tiny bit. So we typically just use self-signed clusters. Yeah. Or self-signed yeah. search for our clusters just for demo purposes. So um, so for those of you who've used Argo, this might look familiar, except for this little login via uh, OpenShift button yes. thingy here. Give me the this button. Is, Give me the button, login via OpenShift, right? So this is like the SSO login. So this is connected uh, with Dex on the back end. So um, let's log in. This will bring this up here, normally would. You type um, in your normal credentials for your OpenShift cluster. Yeah, I always forget the OpenTLC. There we go. So this yeah. authorized access. Yep, allows us permission. It just needs to read your user, right? So um, mm -hmm. once you're logged in, you can actually go to um, accounts and you see um, that you're an admin, right? So, um, so that mapping worked. So as you can see, but cool. Um, so cool. This is the um, the overview, right? Yeah, this um, is the Argo CD page itself. Yeah. And what I like to do is I like to um, drop to the CLI um, because some of the stuff you have to do through this. It, it's still like very. There's some stuff you can do with the CLI. Some stuff you can do. Um, on the web UI, it's not a hundred. It's not one to one just yet, right? So I actually have the. Yeah. Um, it's almost Argos. like all the stuff is new or something. Yeah, it's like it's almost. <laughs> it's almost like this is cutting edge technology. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if I do Argo CD version, um, right, I'm wanting one uh, one point five point two, which is new enough um, um, for this, right? So right. So our, when you run the Argo CD CLI, it actually reads um, your. Um, Cube config. Yeah, your cube config yeah. file, right? Yeah. So um, I actually did an OC login before before I did this, right? So it. Um, okay. So yeah, you were logged in on the command line. So I'm already logged in. So you know, if uh, for those for those of you, um, I I'm missing a step. You you're not seeing a step that I already did before is actually logged in, right? So if I do like OC, who am I? I am the Open TLC manager, right? Which is a, a cluster admin. Um, right. So here. Uh, if I do um, Argo CD uh, add cluster, it's cluster add, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's saying, um, you know, it's saying, oh, add what cluster, right? Because the command's not complete. <laughs> right. It says, well, what, what cluster do you want to add? Um, because, um, you know, I, I see this one, right? If you're logging into multiple clusters, mm -hmm. um, it'll, it'll list all of them because it's asking, well, which one do you want to add, right? And I, I believe... Um, you add it just by the name, right? So yeah, I uh, think you're right. Yeah, OpenShift um, gives it this uh, this context name. Um, you can rename it if you want, so you know it's something easier. But I always do. Um, yeah, like that middle part of that, like <laughs> everything oh. between default and Open TLC Manager, it was not created by us. By the yeah. way, it was created by our uh, 
demo system. Yeah. Um, I missed. I missed it broke. Step. Did you? Well, I because I missed. Oh, a you step. missed a step. Okay. I missed a step. Yeah. So um, it broke. Well, yeah, because I missed a step. <laughs> I had to do Argo CD <laughs> login, right? Argo CD login. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause yeah, it's, I log- cause it, cause, it is a separate yeah. system and it has to OAuth to. Yeah. So yeah. like, I have a. Yeah, I don't have a, an Argo CD. Um, <laughs> so it's Argo CD login, uh, and then let me put up the help menu. Um, usually, you give it a username, password, and a cluster, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But since we are um, using Dex and uh, the open sh- open OpenShift, OAuth, yeah. um, we have to do the SSO um, okay. option. Uh, then what? Just login the server name. Yeah, SSO, and then whatever the server name is here. The Argo server name. The Argo server name. The okay. Argo, yeah. yes, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, where Argo's running, right? So, um, unknown port. How does it do an unknown How port? port? Uh-huh. Do I have to do it like this? I think it's like a Kubernetes thing. Oh, yep, it is. Yeah. <laughs> so it opens up a browser and essentially log tells in. you to yeah, log in, right? Cool. Once you get authentication successful, the CLI should return, uh, which it does. Right? Um, so now if I do an Argo CD version, yeah. it gives me it tells you server you version. In. And Ta-da. yeah, yeah. show me. Cool. So now, where I was before. There we go. Not that. So not, not SSO add. Where's the add? Cluster add. Oh, All right. So go. now we're doing cluster add. Cluster add, the name of the cluster. Um, in terms, in, in the context, right? In what, how it appears right. in my, in my uh, cube config file. Um, uh oh, permission denied. Cluster is create. Denied. K cluster. Cluster is create. Oh. Uh, so wait a minute. Service account already exists. Uh-huh. Updated. Updated. Is this is this a Dex error? I'm I'm wondering no. if this is a Dex error. No, this is an OC error. That's talking to the API. You're logged in. Are you sure you're logged in to the right cluster? Yeah, you, OC status. Yeah, you cleared your. So this is server LAS. Yeah, that's that like right. TLC. Okay, that's good. Da, da, da. Hmm. I wonder if I'm describer. Hang on. I wonder if I messed something up. Let me Google when I something. try to add it before. Oh, I can't copy again. and paste this out of Zoom. Duh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was just trying to copy and paste out of Zoom like it was my terminal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. That's weird. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, let's uh, see if I can yeah. add it in the um, in the UI. Let's see if is this one of those things it. where like the UI might have more logic. Uh, you, you're hearing me typing on another screen. <laughs> oh, and 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 Andrew's funny. Okay, uh, clusters in, in clusters. So, yeah, you can't see. The problem is you can't add um, a. Uh, you can't add the existing cluster. Yeah. Well, I can't. I can't. Uh, I can't add a cluster here. Um, right. Oh, there's no option. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. you have to do from the the CLI. Um, Cluster bootstrapping. Oh, Helm. Blah, blah, blah. Where's the... Um, yeah, because... So, the... Um, let me... Uh, so, here, the Dex. I'm saying... Okay, I'm using Dex. Version 2.2. I wonder if that's the, the updated version. Um, policy read only. Role cluster. Role admin. So cluster you have, admins. yeah, like that's what I don't understand. Yeah. Like you have the right permissions. Yeah. So let's, um, so someone says let's delete the role. Um, delete the role bindings and try again. Yeah, yeah. So let's do, uh, wait, let's do add first. Well, let's, let's do this live. So cube CTL. You got to delete the role bindings, et cetera, and start again. Interesting. Cube CTL get um, uh, secrets. Argo. So there's the secrets that. Oh my God, that's so much. Um, <laughs> yeah, I probably those, yeah, those are, are are put it by the operator. So let's do add, 
And then let's do um, kubectl delete sa right in the namespace. I'm not sure if this will work, so I'm just I'm just doing it. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Uh, okay, so delete that guy. Uh, kubectl delete uh, cluster role. Cool. All right. Cluster roll binding. binding. Uh, this guy. And then you just cross your fingers and hopefully this goes. No. Yeah. Uh, can you can you send that to me, please? Sure. Like through through some through some mechanism. Yeah, I'll, I'll some I'll, chat I'll thingy. I don't care. Any chat thingy. I got them all open. <laughs> you got them all open. Um, there we go. Thank you. And then, but we did. Um, so one one of the one of the amazing things about Andy, see, I'm 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 just praising him right here, is that no matter what time of day, he always answers me. Yeah. Um, and like he's like in some part of the world. I'm like, isn't it like, aren't you yeah. in China right now, or aren't right. you in Argentina? Like, what were? Um, but like he'll answer. Okay, so there there is an issue for dex sso yeah so it, he, he might have pushed a new version of the of the dex operator mm -hmm. um you need to set policy default and roll argo cd rbex cm so this is after we get here so yeah never mind we haven't even logged in yet if you do add without any arguments what's the yeah so oops oh yeah that's a good point um, Argo CD add, and it says, uh, oh, cluster add. Yeah, it says just API. Uh oh, uh, of, of course, Andy says, I know what you did. <laughs> so uh -oh. I'm about to be, I'm about to be scolded. Hold on. Um, maybe it's just the cluster. Hold on. Wait. Yeah. Is it just the API? Yeah. So maybe just this. Yeah, that would make more sense since it was asking for. No, you left off the A. Yeah, I need I need the A here. Give me the A. Yeah, it does not exist in cube config. So yeah. Okay. Uh... Uh... So yeah, I would I would think it's the hmm. the cluster cluster add and then this guy here. Is there a, is a log? Log level. <laughs> log level uh, uh, all? I don't know, 10? <laughs> I bet you About log levels. Uh, info. So I think this is info uh, debug. Yeah, permission denied That's clusters create. Super helpful. Oh, the problem is that cluster admins is a role. OK. That doesn't. Help. Oh, it's a role, not a group. Yeah. Uh, um, what? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So now, now, now I'm following. Okay. So this is something that I'm really bad at. Um, so if anyone can help me in the chat, or anyone, or you know, I'll, I'll ask. I'll ask my 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 back end engineer here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so since like Kubernetes is just like a bunch of objects, right. That relate to each other via label. Um, I don't know how to get, so, so just back up a little bit. So the, um, um, the, the issue is what we're theorizing is that, um, uh, that this, this role, I'm not part of this group here. Argo CD like, project isn't. Um, the 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 the, uh, the the policy, right? So me, so like if I do OC, who am I? So oh, TLC okay. So manager the is, TLC is manager not, is not. Yeah, it's, got it. it's okay. not part of this, right? Yeah. But like, how do I see what groups, like OC get user, and then um, yeah, OC get user. Help. Sometimes it's in there. Um, 
and it's not because no. sometimes it's part of the array, but it's it's obviously it's uh, OC get OC groups. groups. Yeah. yeah, no resources, no resources found. Okay, maybe. Here. Yeah, how do I see? Oh, the Tyler's on. Yeah, maybe you can help me out, Tyler. Tyler's always love to have the red headers on board. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so how would I see OC get cluster role binding? So there are no groups on the cluster, so you would probably need to. So cluster role binding and so then the bind system, it. System cluster. Oh, that's that's too much. Um, less <laughs> cluster admin. So there is cluster admins, but I want I want to bet that I'm not oh, part of that group. Tyler says do. Oh, go back to your YAML. Oh, there might be a. Uh, Tyler's got something in chat here. Like yeah. just add the user. No, there's just cluster admins. Well, just just cheating a bit. All the users, yeah. Um, so I guess I could. Yeah, just add the user for now. Um, yeah. All right. So cool. Let's go back to the the manual that someone. Yeah. Linked earlier. I got it yeah. for you if you need it. So this yeah. is. Um, uh, so we want to. So, do, so how do you do user? Uh, just so you. P is it P or is it you? Our back permissions for breaking down the permissions. Applications for app. Oh, so I think it's just P is you always have the P. Oh, P is for policy, maybe. Right. Yeah. And you would just say Oh P and then the G is for okay, so this is a group. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What was Yuri said in chat? He just copied and pasted out of the the docs. So yeah, P role. role user group, comma, resource, comma, action, comma, object. So the okay. P is always there, real user or group. In this case, it'd be user. Uh, yeah. So then let's do um, Argo CD, Argo CD ML. Um, and so this would be, let's keep that there. Um, yeah, just so, add on. So P for policy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yes. the role is resource. Admin. So then I would be uh, open TLC manager like that, essentially. Maybe take out the scopes. So. I, I don't know, man. Let's go here. Try it. See what happens. Um, Tyler says what Wajiri said. And Washari, if I'm saying your name wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is this will be fun. So we'll see how the uh, the operator handles this, right? To see, or if I have to just delete the thing and start over. Um, yeah, it might be a, a a blow away the project start over thing. We'll see. Okay. Uh, I love learning live. Let's learn live. Yeah, that's yeah. the best part of Twitch, man. Yeah. So I so this is so fun fact. This is the first time I've done this on a. Um, RHPDS cluster. So the um, yeah, and for everyone out yeah. there, RHPDS is our like partner demo system. So we yeah. have a number of things that it's just like, you know, it's like click, 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 give me this, click, 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 give me yeah. that type of thing. So it shortcuts us. But there's also because anyone or just about anyone in our technical org can do it. They predefine some things just to keep us safe and from us, yeah, you know, yeah. clobbering each or, other kind of deal. <laughs> yeah, or like they do things like mess uh, mess with your mess with the groups. Um, yeah, <laughs> or they give you a user that's seemingly like an admin, right? Like it's close to admin. admin yeah, it's like light. close enough to an admin, but um, yeah. so let's uh, let's let's just apply this right or replace. Let's see what happens. And if not, we just blow away the yeah the operator and okay oh, okay what's it doing? Placed. And then let's look at the workloads pods and see if like things start deleting or not. Doesn't look like. Mm -mm. Um, depends how long that reconciliation loop is too for the operator yeah. itself. So let's 
for something this high level, I would not think it'd be long. You'd have to like force it maybe. Invalid policy. So mm. it does. So it, it does actually pretty fast because if you see the here in my bottom right, it's just mm -hmm. invalid policy. Expected five, if five got two, got two. evals. Um, Expected five. Is there like a default set you have to put in? Yeah, so it's it's P because, um, so I'm gonna delete this and just do it apply, replace again. I'm going to, uh, so the only change now uh, besides that is instead of admins, I just put admin and let's just see. Oh, okay, what yeah. What happened? Okay, so I'm, I'm in again. All right, so let's try, maybe maybe I just put admins by, by Nope, same no. thing. Uh, let's see, who am I? Don't. Oh, yeah. I know. I know who to ping. Let's see, who am I? Who am I? Um, who am I? Who am I? Where yeah, the, did I come where, from? Where am I? Who am I? Um, what group am I? How do I know? Okay, so uh, get... So there's cluster admin, other admin, maybe cluster admin dash zero. I think that's what it is. Is, is that, 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 that special group? Yeah, because I don't remember seeing. But if so you're not in any groups. Yeah. Would you um, have to add yourself to the group? Regardless? Hang on, Tyler just wrote a whole wall of blah, a whole wall of text. Okay. So what does what does Tyler say? He says, so how Argo by itself handles things is the policies and RBAC stuff is read dynamically. So no reboot should be required. Be required. But okay. I'm not sure if the operator will see a difference in the CR and just try to reconcile the whole thing and just clobber everything. Which in theory it probably should do. If you're so gonna my, change yeah. the whole higher level, you know, access to everything. Because usually, yeah, user info. See, so look here. Okay, so, this, so it tells you. So I'm um, I'm not part of any of the any of the groups. <laughs> yeah, let's add you to a group, buddy. So that's Maybe. a problem. Yeah. yeah. So I will I will. Um, okay, so let's do. Um, we'll do this live. So OC ADM, um, add, add. Uh, is a policy add role to user cluster dash admin um, to the user uh, open TLC manager. Okay, and in theory, this should give me no. It still gives me oh the um no that doesn't add me to a group that um. Wait, what did uh, you do? I didn't see it. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So, um, added yeah, a role, not a group. Yeah, it, it added me to that role, but not a group. Yeah. But let's just see. Let's see if that worked. I don't think it will. Oh, it's doing something. Hold it's up. Thinking. It's thinking. Hold up. Nope. Oh, Colonel right. Panic. I um, am uh, calling the big guns. Calling the big guns. Add cluster. Role to bind to permission denied. Um, and that gives me, so I wonder if I, um, let me go back to my original config to change as little as possible. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that is authenticated. I could, I could just give me authenticated. See, we're all about security here, so it's uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Security sometimes. I mean, it's it's great if you're demoing security to the security guys. So, uh, could add authenticated. This will give everyone access to it. Well, you know, it's firewall. That's right. Uh, default policy role. I could do that. I could roll admin default policy. Yeah, maybe. Just to show. Okay. So ideally, Tyler says this should just pick it up, right? 
Yeah, it should just like auto grab it pretty quickly. Auto grab, just do it. Yeah. yeah. Do it live. So cluster added. All right. Cool. So, so back to 20 minutes ago. Now that I right. have the cluster. So, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so by the way, um, so don't do what I did, right? The right. default policies role admin. Um well, as, as soon as Andy gets back to me, he'll he'll let me know the like the right way to do it. But I essentially change the default policy to, um, uh, um, to role admin instead of um, role read only, because mm-hmm. it wasn't picking me up as part of any group here. Um, so um, so that's that's that thing here. So so I have a cluster added, and like when I go to Argo CD. Um, I go to my clusters and now, uh, you see my cluster added as part of it. Ta-da. Right. So, ta-da. so we have magic. That. So that's magic. Um, another thing you need to do, and this was actually a bug, but let's see if they fixed it. Um, this is a bug I, I filed earlier, but it was closed. So, um, so now I had, I added the cluster, right? Um, so if in order so Argo can do things two ways, right? So when you sync an application to a Git repo, it'll dynamically do a Git clone, or you mm-hmm. can load the Git repository beforehand, right? So this this will make it slightly faster um, when um, instead of doing it dynamically, it'll have a local copy, right? So it'll it'll just do the Git pulls and um, reconcile the differences locally as as well. It's like kind of like a local cache, right? So right. if I do an Argo CD um, add uh, repo add, I think it is repo. And let's just look at the help menu here. So uh, add, right? So if I do a, oops, if I do a repo list, it says nothing, mm-hmm. right? And I do an add of my Git repo. Uh, repo list now shows the repositories, right? Um, and if that, again, if you go to your repositories here, it'll um, um, it'll add it here. You can use SSH, right? Like if you connect it with SSH, you can um, give it the the key, right? If uh, yep. HTTPS, you can give it the username and password. It'll it'll store it locally. Mine is um, um, would you so just yeah. give it a generic key or something? Oh, this is this is a public. It's public. Oh, okay, so. never mind. Duh. Yeah, it's public repo. So since a public repo, I don't have to give it anything. Here, I just I just I, um I just give it the repo. But if you have like SSH or whatever, you can upload mm-hmm. it there um, or a private repo, whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So here, um, so cool. So now that's like the baseline of what you need, right? Mm-hmm. A, you need a repo, right? Like I want something to sync. Again, this could be dynamic. It could do it at runtime, but I like uploading it first. Right. And then clusters, right? Where do you want to deploy your applications? Um, so some of the things in my repository, if you notice here in my route, I have, um, I, I already, I basically hard coded the route, right? Because I know what the URL is. And I just gave it a name, a BGD, mm-hmm. right? So um, BGD, by the way, stands for Blue Green Deployment. In case you guys wanted to know. Oh, very so, nice. Very nice. Very intuitive. So here, um, Argo stores everything in terms of um, of applications. So there's this. This is a kind of a thing. And uh, if Andrew's on, I, I know he'll 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 have a an opinion on this. But um, we have. Um, in IT, we have a lot of overloaded terms, right? So like, oh yeah. So Hell like, yeah. you know, an application here is kind of a different definition of what you think about it in OpenShift or in Kubernetes. A deployment here is different than what would be a big D deployment in um, Kubernetes versus a small D deployment of like what I consider a deployment. So, right. Um, but just for the sake, just to normalize it here, an application in Argo CD is a deployment small d of mm-hmm. your application to a cluster right there's a one to one relationship right an application per cluster so nice. um so here when i create an application um in my mind i'm actually talked uh, talked to this about to some other people using argo it's like to me this registers as a small d deployment but argo city calls it application so um because to me application is more overarching like my application could be running in different clusters and each cluster has its own deployment, one or many deployments. So um, 
we can get philosophically talked about as much as you want here, but um, mm -hmm. I'm going to call this BGD, right? Um, so here it says, what project do you want to um, install this in? This project, when it says this project, it means it in the, in, in the scope or in, in the view of Argo CD. Right. Not in the view of Kubernetes. So again, this is separate, right? So mm. this project in relation to Argo CD, which is the default project, you can have many projects, right, in Argo CD. Um, Sync policy. I'm gonna do it manual, just so you can, just so you, so you can see. Um, a repository URL, right? Um, gives you this convenient dropdown um, to give this here, um, whatever URL. You can paste it here, right? You don't have to upload it first, but um, right, it'll just default here. You. Yeah, yeah. Here it'll just default you to whatever or whichever ones you loaded. It'll give you the drop down. Yeah. Uh, revision means essentially what branch, right? Um, I created a specific branch called Twitch, right, for this uh, for this video. So uh, yeah, right. How convenient. How and then convenient. the path, right? Like where where is your manifest, right? So here. Uh, yeah. I wish there was like a tree view, but here I'm there actually. There is a tree view. A download Octo Tree. Oh, that's right. You had that that yeah, plugin. That's right. That, that plugin was actually really cool. Yeah. Um, and so, um, so here I have a directory. Right here, I have a directory called BGD, and basically it's in that directory. So I just want you to go down one. So it's not that. It's this. Okay. Slash. I like putting the slash at the end. I don't know why. I saw a demo when I first saw, and someone put a slash at the end, so that I just do it now. I don't think it's necessary. Um, <laughs> And then here, the cluster is uh, the cluster I just added. Mm -hmm. And now here, the destination namespace. So now that this is um, this project namespace. lands yeah. someplace else, this yes, Argo project. CD project can land in a different OpenShift project. Correct. Yeah. So this. Yeah. So this. Yeah. So this, so since I'm, um, it doesn't exist, right? So if I go to overview, oh sorry, if I go to projects here. And I do um, BGD, right? It, it doesn't exist because mm -hmm. my um, your namespace hasn't been deployed. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna create it essentially. Okay. So it doesn't have to exist. It can exist. Um, right, you can pre-create. Yeah. yeah, but um, ex ex since I'm storing everything, um, it doesn't exist right now. Or say so. Uh, this is all you need. And yeah. then I'll cl I'll click create. And then uh, Argo will go and do the things it wants to do, right? So if I, if I click will here, do the Argo -y things. It'll do the Argo -y things. So essentially, it'll go and it'll <laughs> say, "All right, <laughs> I'm out of sync. I'm out let's, of sync." Yeah, let's yeah. let's so sync like, this thing up. Yeah, let's sync this thing up. I have my re so you told me that you want this stuff in this repo to be running here. Um, I don't see it running, so you're out of sync, mm -hmm. right? So when, once I click sync, and I say synchronize everything, give me everything in that repo. Now it starts um, the syncing process, and look, look, it's that fast. So yeah, yeah, like as fast as you can hit kubectl apply. Yeah, it does it. Yep. Also, yep. now any changes are picked up in the Git repo. Correct. Yeah. So now and if I go to single source of truth is created. Single source of truth is there, right? So I yep. have, so I have here BGD, right? So it created the project for me. That's cool. Mm -hmm. It created, um, you know, it's creating the pods. So the pods starting to create, created right. the service. Sweet. It, and it created the route. Nice. So, um, so once the pod's running, that route yeah. should be connectable. And hey, look the, at that. It's just switched to go. running. It's switched to running. We couldn't have timed that any better. Why in your sentence? <laughs> as soon as you were done with your sentence, it came up. That's 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 uh, I want to call that out because that rarely happens that when you time what you're saying right. to what the cluster's doing. Exactly. Um yeah, you have no idea what these clusters are doing behind the scenes. Yeah, you have no idea. Yeah, exactly. You're doing it live. So here <laughs> Like I said here, I it drew a blue uh, it drew a blue box because on my repo, um, if you remember, and if you don't, I'll just bring it up. It says uh, my color equals blue. Yep. So this is cool, right? So you have yeah. um, your route, everything all stored into mm -hmm. Git. Um, but let's 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 do something let's do something funny here. Let's let's do something. Um, so let's edit the deployment. Right. Um, okay. So we're at the deployment, and instead of blue, yeah. So instead of blue, let's do green. Right. Let's do value of green. So I want to. I want to point out. So you're um, you're editing the active deployment on the cluster right now. Correct. Yeah. So this is. I'm not making. 
I'm not making a code change, right? I am not making a change in the code of the application. I am changing the infrastructure that changes the behavior of the, of the application, right? Mm -hmm. So um, nothing in the code changes. I introduce the change in, in the cluster that will... Um, um, it's probably already done. Yeah, that shit that changes the behavior, right? So if I reload this now, now this it's it's a green square, right? I, I put in green, mm -hmm. it does green. If I go to Argo CD, and um, I go uh, I go on the overview page. So oh. notice notice oh. the status, right? It's out of sync. Something's wrong with this app. Sync. So that, it says it says a disconnect. Healthy. Yeah, there's a disconnect, right? Your application's healthy, but I'm out of sync, mm -hmm. right? So there's there, there's a difference. There's nothing wrong with your application. Everything's running, everything's up and running, but there was right. a change in the environment somehow that changes the behavior. Um, because in in the repo, I'm saying I want blue, right? And someone here, if I click on here, someone manually edited something. Yeah, someone did something bad. Logged in. No likey. We we <laughs> some someone thought that we were being clever and edited mm. my live running uh, cluster right with kubectl. And this is similar to SSHing into the box and doing stuff as opposed to using a proper configuration management tool like an Ansible or you know, any of the other ones out there. Yeah, it's it's, a, it's the same paradigm, right? So right. It's, it's the exact same paradigm. It's the same paradigm. Whereas, um, you know, someone SSHing and changing something, and then Ansible, you know, rectifying that for you. This is the same thing, except someone's using kubectl, right? Um, and we're just using manifest here. Like you can even load the diffs, right? So Argo mm -hmm. CD has a, has a cool mechanism where it's like it loads the diffs. It's like here, this is where the diffs are. Um, we want it to be blue, and it's um, so slick. I like it. Yeah, we have green right here. So here, um, you can sync it, right? I can say right. sync, and then synchronize. We're gonna force this puppy back to blue, like it or not. Yeah, like it or not, this will this will and and this is I'm doing this is cool and I'm just doing it manually, right? So there's actually right. an auto, there's an auto sync, right? Like if you um, switch to auto, auto, like we never would have saw any of this stuff, right? Like we wouldn't have had yeah. time between us yeah. speaking, it would have been fixed. It, yeah, exactly. It would have done <laughs> so now. So now here the overview says it's healthy and it's synced. So now Beautiful. your app is up and running, and not only is it up and running, it's it's um it's synced to your source of truth. Mm -hmm. which is and then if I, I reload this page it should come up blue, blue right um so what's the proper was, way to change this color yeah oh the proper way to change this color would be to um come up here right and say uh i'm gonna edit this well the proper way is to well, that, fork it the proper way is to fork <laughs> it yeah fork let's it. not Submit let's not jump PR. through the get theatrics yeah, just yeah, yet yeah. you know yeah Submit but a we, PR. Assuming yeah. we're forking it, creating a branch, submitting a PR for exactly. review, it gets the review, it finally gets the approval tag, and off we go. But yeah. for the sake of discussion, we're just gonna edit master right now. Yeah, we're just gonna edit it straight to the to the branch. Um green, right? So yeah. the proper way to change the color is to go to your source of truth and say, I want this to be whatever green. process so you have in place to get changes into your system through git you do it that way yeah. do it that way for but us, the idea for this demo yeah it's master. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the, yeah but the idea is hot no so to answer your question how do you change the is do it in git right yep. do whatever process you need to do in git um so here it should come up pretty soon i i can actually do uh where's the refresh there we go so it's now yeah, out, out of sync, sync. Yep. so it says out of sync so i'm running blue Yep, but currently blue. Up, up, upstream repo says green, green. so let's sync it, right? Yep. Um, before I hit synchronize, you notice like, like there's like uh, other options, things like dry run, mm -hmm. right? Things that you would normally would want to do. And, um, and it even the, points out which individual thing is out of sync. Like you can yeah. just act on that one. So right. I can, yeah. So in, so instead of the overhead, uh, I mean, we're just playing around here, but like there would be overhead if mm -hmm. you have you know hundreds of manifests right <laughs> trying to sync all of that if you just want to sync one thing it'll it'll do the one thing um also there's an option called prune so what it's like what does that do so first is synchronize it so make sure we're all in compliance right so we're all about right being yep compliant. okay cool well now we're back we're back so to now our we're state back. of truth our, our of truth all good here. here yeah um so that prune option so there's the the idea of is you not only have things that are um, that you're syncing with Git, right? The, you might have, um, instead of like introducing a change, like changing the color, like what if someone adds something? Right. 
right? Like what if someone adds something to this namespace? So for example, so I'll, like, since this is a cooking show, um, uh, so I have, I have this config map, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a it's just a dumb config map, right? So if I do a, a, a kubectl uh, apply in the namespace bgd, so if I add this config map, okay. right? Um, now you're it, immediately it, out of sync. You're immediately out of sync. Argo CD says, "Okay, well, there's this other thing that I, I <laughs> where'd this, this come is. from? Where did this come from? <laughs> I, don't, I mean, you know, this is not in the repo." So I, I don't know what to do with this thing. Who um, is your daddy and what yeah, do you and, do? And what does he do? Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> where someone added a config map. So so the config map or a secret actually could be kind of a dangerous thing, right? Someone right, is pointing like, to a different database. Someone is is trying yeah. to get some sort of key value stored, injecting it, um, you know, or someone just made a mistake and just added the config. I, I, I know, notice how I did a dash N in the namespace. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I just forget that. Oh yeah, I, no, totally I, right. Like, whoops, and I, wrong namespace. Yeah, and and I and I apply my um my config map to a different namespace. Like, where'd it go? I'm like, oh, it's a cube system. Oh, what? it shouldn't be there. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so when I click sync, um, I need to do a prune, right? So when I click prune, it'll go. Okay, anything I don't know about, it's gone, right? So once uh, once it starts the, let me click refresh, um. Did I, ooh, did I, did I click out of it? Oh. Yeah, prune it. Prune, there you Synchronize. go. Synchronize. So this should, there we go. Yeah, it's syncing so, and done. And done, right. So. Um, <laughs> I just love how fast it is. That's just. Yeah, yeah, it'll just, it'll yeah. just do it, right? Because one, um, so this is different than, um, different than, uh, Puppet or like uh, like Salt Stack or like or even Ansible where you have to like trigger this right? right so you have to trigger these changes right oh you can have like a um uh, uh, call it? like a cron job running cron job or around to trigger the changes or force yeah. the synchronization kind of thing yeah yeah so you can do that or you can just leverage the control loop the yeah. the idea of CRDs and just have Kubernetes do it for you. It's, it's, it's so much. It's, it's the so reconciliation much, uh, loop and yeah. watching the the events coming by, right? Like yeah. that, doing things with Kubernetes Kubernetes native functions and Kubernetes native ways is the best way to get the, the speed yeah. and you know performance you want from your infrastructure when you're building cloud native yeah. environments. These hybrid clouds that we're talking about nowadays, right? Like this is going to extend across on premises cloud your desktop your laptop for development whatever it is like this is how we touch all this yeah so um so yeah so here what's what's actually really cool is i was talking about before like you know what if i come in here and just delete the project right so when you delete a project um oh boy you're gone er everything's gone like everything underneath is gone the, my, it, my pods, all the secrets the config maps secret, yes, everything, everything Everything is gone in that namespace, right? So, um, so while this is terminating here, this takes it takes it takes a while for it to terminate, right? Yeah, because it's um, actually removing every piece and component replica set and the whole nine yards that you've put in there. Yeah, so all the all the all the work we put in to deploying uh, the application, and it's now gone, right? So, how does Argo handle this, right? How does your your tool? So, oh boy. Um, so it's not only out of sync, right? Notice the status instead of yeah. changing. It says like, it's oh no, <laughs> you're missing. It's gone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alert it's, manager, where's my page? <laughs> yeah, where is my page? Uh, pager duty. Pager duty. Send the pager duty. My app is down, right? Um, but if I click sync and I click synchronize, um, if I go back to my project and type uh, BGD, it'll it'll come back up, right? So, um, catastrophic failure. You're back. Yeah. This is dumb. Um, you know, and it's 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 already it's already yeah, running. Yeah, it's already up. It's already back up. Um, to the color I want, to the state that it was in. So, um, um, so yeah. So I mean, have, and uh, like, clap your hands. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> clap on application. Clap yeah. off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Clap off applications. Up. You can even. So this was actually pretty. Um, I know me and me and Eric, we messed with Alexa. Uh, connecting Alexa to uh, OpenShift. I wonder if we can do the same thing with Argo. And it says, uh, 
Ar Argo, sync that. <laughs> um, Alexa, sync that. Uh, sync that application for me. Um, so this is uh, so this is really cool if you're doing like uh, if you're doing in cluster, right? So there's the idea where Argo can handle multiple clusters. This is one of the the differentiating factors of mm -hmm. of uh, between Argo and and Flux. Right. So so Flux, um, you need to it's um, in cluster, right? So you need to have a Flux system in each cluster that you want to manage. Whereas an Argo is kind of a hub and spoke design, where you can mm -hmm. have an like a central Argo um, um, installation that manages many clusters, right? So let's. Um, you said you had a cluster, right? Yeah, I got a cluster. You you, you want to jump into it real quick? Yeah, yeah. So send it to me on the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. Right. And then right. we'll we'll see how Argo uh, handles that. So um, what what what? Paste shit though. Yeah. Well, just make sure it's in the right chat. Um, oh shit. So yeah. So I'll, I'll let you. Uh, um, while while you're while you're looking for that. I got it. I just sent it to oh. you in Slack. Cool. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so how do you handle? So what if I want to deploy this application, right? BGD. What if I want to deploy this application to many clusters? Yeah. So there's a, there's a few things that you need to keep in mind, right? So the, one of the things is that that changes is the fact that uh, the route's going to be different. OK. Right? So the route's going to be different. Uh, you know, different cluster mm. is going to have a different DNS name. It's going to have a different, different everything. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Different everything. Um, also, what if I want to do something like, like a blue green or canary deployment or something to where, you know what? I want one cluster to show the blue square, and I want the other one to show a green square, right? Oh, fancy. Like, yeah, like how do how do you do that, right? Like how does like I have a deployment and it's hard coded in, um, you know how do you do that? So the the answer to that is uh, what people commonly do is uh, customize, right? So they use mm -hmm. customize, and that's built into Argo CD, right? Um, it'll it'll do customize. So the the idea is that you have a base directory with everything that everything that's common between all clusters. Right, so in my base directory, things that are common between all clusters are things like the service. Right, that doesn't change. You know, I'm still listening on eighty eighty in my service, no matter what cluster I'm in. Um, things like the deployment. Right, so other than um, other than the fact that this value is set to blue, the deployment itself is uh, is pretty common. Also, the route definition is common. But if you notice here in um, in my uh, my customized configuration, I actually left it empty set. Oh, right? okay, cool. Yeah. So I have base, right? Base meaning I have um, this is common across all clusters, and I have a customization YAML saying, um, you know, when you run customize, uh, run it against these services here as these mm -hmm. uh, manifest. Yep. Um, touch these ones. Yeah, touch these guys. And then what do I do, right? So I have overlays. So in my overlays, I have um, I have cluster one, right? In my cluster one, I have a deployment definition that says, "Hey, whatever I get." So I'm using the the JSON um, patching. I forget what it's. There's like a long name for it, but um, I'm using that mechanism to say, "Hey, patch this value to mean blue." So no matter mm -hmm. what it's set. I want you to change it, patch it before you load it into Kubernetes. Um, and in the route too, right? So in the route, it says um, um, if uh, patch patch it within. I I realize I have to change this, but that's 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 fine. We'll do it live. Um, do it live. We'll do it live. So we have here. Um, we'll patch the host, right? I put it have it an empty set in the base. Here I said, okay, when you load it in, patch it with this. When you know, when I say cluster one. Uh, same idea with cluster two. Same idea, deployment. Right. I'm going to change it to green, mm -hmm. and in the the route, I want to change it to this route. Right. Um, so I'll actually, I'll do this live. While we're watching here. Uh, I believe this is your apps route. So we'll do this. This is your so, cluster. So Sachin mentioned that I think we have, with GitOps, we need to ensure that all the operators should also get deployed through Git. Now, that's possible. That's basically what Operator Hub 
does is it yeah. is pulling in stuff from you know a certified repository and uh that image um you can in theory deploy your operators with git and like go through this whole process yourself but that's part of the the the, the power of openshift is that operator hub integration which you can also you know deploy that operator into your you know vanilla kubernetes cluster any kubernetes cluster certified kubernetes cluster those operators should work so there's nothing preventing you from saying uh git apply this operator right like or not git apply but kubectl will apply this Q -cuddle, yeah. yeah 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 and also um i can definitely see the operands being in 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 git right mm -hmm. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely see those definitely being in here. So I have, so this is my cluster, and then this is yours. Uh, oh, I guess this is what you're in Detroit, right? DTW. Yeah, DTW, baby. There you go. So this is this is actually a really good, really good, good example, right? I have a cluster in the West Coast and I have one in Central. Cluster right? Central, yeah, East so, Coast. I mean, I don't know, whatever East you call Ish. Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. Where is is Detroit and Central? Detroit is. Detroit is central or Eastern time zone. Um, Eastern. Gotcha. And we have faster traffic to New York and Chicago than we do Toronto, which interesting. Chicago, Toronto's a little further away than Chicago, but yeah, it's weird. I'll say you probably drive faster there. Um, you have a lot, like when I want to go to Toronto, I still have to lay over in Atlanta from <laughs> 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 Cool. Um, so yeah, so here, uh, if you were watching, I, I updated the route, right? So now when, um, cluster two gets deployed, this gets patched and then, yep. um, and then the first cluster, this route gets patched, right? And one mm -hmm. does one to the other. So, um, cool. Oh yeah. So, um, and how, how to delete something in Argo city, you have to delete it from within Argo city, right? So you just delete right. it from within Argo city, um, and it's actually gone here from the branch. So that's how you delete something, right? So now you have an overarching right. uh, control system here. Um, cool. So then let's, let's, uh, let's, where is here? There it is. So I'm going to, um, so you're going to see me add a new cluster to Argo CD, right? So if I do Argo CD uh, cluster add, right? It just sees mine um, because I already added it, right? I'll see cluster uh, list. Right, it's um, it'll list the the cluster I just added um, at LAX over here. Um, so it doesn't see your cluster, uh, Chris. So what I have to do is I have to do an OC login uh, of that cluster. Right. Um, uh, what is the option? Insecure skip TLS verify. Yeah. And this is open uh, TLC. TLC dash MGR. R, and this is the standard password. Yes, it is. I can never type it. I always copy and paste it. Yeah, I, I can never type it. Yeah, I probably should both copy and paste it. There it is. All right. So then now if I do um, cluster add, now it has this uh, the second option, right? Of um, Oh, look at that. You can pick there. which one now. Yep. So the cluster add uh, this guy. So this should work, right? Because we fixed the um, the, the binding. The yeah. yeah, the binding. So now now that the cluster's there, now if I do uh, Argo CD, you know, cluster list, it'll list you there as well. So sweet. So now I am all your cluster belongs to me now. So ah. I have, <laughs> so let me uh, should I Sirs. copy link. Let's open it up here just in case. Yeah, just to give her just to have a side view by here. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, this is the, the OAuth page here. Yep. Uh, and then I always have to look at the keyboard to make sure I'm typing, <laughs> I'm typing it right. Um, so here, yeah. So I here I have, I have two clusters, right? Um, yep. What I'm going to be doing is that if I go to um, the base, right, everything is going to deploy in the same namespace. I'm just going to call it BGD, right? right? Yep. So if I go to, um, I forgot, this one is mine. So if I go to the, this one, BGD is not found. If I go to yours, 
BGD there not either. found. Yep. Okay. They're not there. So clean um, clusters. Clean clusters, right? Um, so here, come on. You can do it. Reload. There it goes. No right. application. No so, apps. No apps yet. Um, so same same steps, right? Application name. I'm gonna call this uh, BGD K1, I guess, right? Because this is the first cluster, and it's I'm using customize. Right. Uh, default policy. Um, URL. Same same URL. Same Twitch. same branch. Yep. So you can do it, I believe. T W I T C H. Yeah. Um, you cheat a little bit, but I'll. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this, well, this is better than what what I did with Jay with purse list, right? Like he'll he. I, I think I give uh, him nightmares. Geez. Um. So here, what I'm saying is for the path, I'm saying okay, go to the overlays, and uh, and read cluster one, right? And that'll run customize and it'll load all the right options there. Um, for cluster one, I want my destination to be LAX, right? Mm -hmm. And in the namespace of BGD, right? And then uh, that's all I need. I click create, and this okay, will. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's going to say missing thing. out of sync, and it's going to sync up if you hit sync, right? Yep. So here we'll add another application, BGDK2. Um, again, this project is in the scope of uh, Argo, so. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and this is see if I can spell it again. Yeah, I yes, got it. nailed it. <laughs> nailed All it right. first day. <laughs> <laughs> so here I got uh, cluster two, right? So here now I'm, I'm, I'm just basically it's the same Git repo. I'm just pointing to a different directory. Yep. Um, and then in the cluster, I'm saying uh, Detroit. Dubs. And then the namespace BGD, right? So create. So here. Um, so here I get, I get these tiles. One says obviously in in my re they're missing in both, right? Yep. Out of sync, um, out of sync, missing for sure. Missing for sure. Right. So if I sync here, yeah, do the whole thing. And then let's sync this guy too. And let's uh, let's look at the let's look at the let's look at the cluster. So oh, it says the tank. They're both all right. Yeah. Dang. yeah this this one's progressing. <laughs> this one's done. Um, so let's go to the, the, the LA one. As you see, my... Um, yep, there's a project. It's project here. So this is all, it would be the same uh, on both, right? If I, mm. Project, pod, everything, except the URL, right? So I expect this right. to have the, the proper URL. This is it looks like it does. Green, right? And this is yeah, blue. Yeah, yours is blue. Mine's green. Yeah. Got it. So let's uh, let's see what yours. Yours is still going. No, it's synced. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. So let's go. To, oh, see, there it is. Right. So ta -da. A few seconds ago, yeah, just yeah, a few seconds ago. <laughs> so let's go BGD here. Um, again, all this is a standard, um, except here has this this route, right? right. It has the the TT dub. TT dub. Um, when I click here, it'll give me green. Right, so it's the same. Get ups, baby. That's right. <laughs> right. Um, so the. Uh, so the idea is here is that I have a single source of truth, but then I can deploy it multiple times, and I use customize in order to have change. So this doesn't have to be like environment variables, or it doesn't have to be uh, things like routes, right? It could be also things like scale, right? Like I want to run, um, you know, three in one data center, and I want to run four in another data center, maybe because you know one data center receives more traffic than the other. And I want to be able to have different scale, right? Same app, different scale. Um, so you can pretty much use uh, customize for all, for all of that. And um, um, there's there's other methods to do it, right? I think case on it is another one. Yeah, there's um, a few out there. there. There's a few out there. I think customize is the most uh, the most popular one. Yeah. Um, it's it's the one it's the one I use. It's the one a lot of people use. Uh, you don't have to use that one. Uh, the the idea yeah. is is that you have a single want. source yeah. of truth. Yeah. And use whatever tool to um, differentiate. Um, and um, one thing, and I'm surprised no one has asked about it, but I'll bring it up since someone oh, I was waiting for someone to ask, <laughs> um, is how do you how do you deal with secrets, right? Um, yeah. Like why like you're not storing username and passwords on Git, um, right? Because some, sometimes secrets, yeah, you definitely config uh -huh. maps no. have that. Um, so the idea is that. Uh, most people in um, 
that are using either Flux or Argo are use use something called um, that, that tool by Bitnami. What's it called? Uh, Sealed Secrets. Oh yeah. Um, right. um, or uh, you can use, uh, Vault. HashiCorp Vault. Yeah. Yep. You can use Vault. You can even use um, if you're using Ansible. Like if you're using Ansible as your sync tool, you, you have Ansible uh, Secrets as well, right? Like you can. You yeah. Can like you you could have all of like let's say you had your entire you know. Argo CD repo, right? Your BGD repo just completely blasted out with tons of clusters and everything else, right? Like you could actually use Jinja 2 templating yeah. and Ansible secrets inside that and, you know, have Ansible kind of manage that for you in the process. Yeah. It yeah. takes, it take, it take a little bit of glue, but you can make it work. You can make, yeah. You, the, the idea is that, so the idea, so the answer or the idea is yes, you do store your secrets in Git. You store them encrypted. <laughs> Very right, you, encrypted. You, yeah, yeah. So you store the encrypted version in Git, and um, your and secret gets, has to live elsewhere. Yeah, and then it gets decrypted at runtime, right? At, I mean, it only gets at runtime. Into, yeah, and only at runtime it gets decrypted. So and that's why Vault and Sealed Secrets and all these things exist, is because it's very hard to trust that you know, all of a sudden AES encryption is going to be broken or, you know, right. Like you, yeah, ne yeah. you don't necessarily want all your secrets in Git, right? Like, but sometimes yeah, yeah, exactly, you have yeah. to put them there. Um, but like, that's why vault exists and, yeah. you know, shout out to them for making, you know, sealed secrets, a thing and their most recent version. And, uh, yeah, like making that more usable in these cloud native environments is great. Yeah. So the, so the, the, the idea is that yes, you do store it in Git because, um, you know, and, th and this problem existed before, right? So, like, right. this was like it, this, this is always a problem. This has always right. been a problem. Like, where do I where store, do you store like, your passwords, right? Yeah, like, where do you store your passwords? Yes, that's exactly. always an organizational problem, and now it's an yeah. application problem. So, yeah, exactly, you have exactly. to solve it. Yeah, you have to solve, you have to solve it somehow because, yeah, where, where do we store? Because, like, you know, you're behind a firewall, mm -hmm. you're in, in, in a um, you're in a, a, a private Git repo. And still feels funny, and like, and you have like all the RBACs, is, you know, in place. Every RBAC, every everything, AES two fifty six encrypted yeah. secret. It still doesn't feel. It doesn't feel. Yeah, it, it still feels weird to put it on Git. Like it just right. does. It's, it's it a just, paradigm. It's a it paradigm just shift. does, yeah. and that's <laughs> yeah. That's why I don't. I don't. It's a personal preference. I, I I've seen people do it. I have done it in the past where yeah. I've put uh -huh. the secret up on Git, and it hasn't caused me any problems, but. Yeah. It's well, still, it's one of those things that's like in the back of your mind, it's like all those secrets in Git is like, it's, it's just it's waiting like, yeah, like, for something wrong to go happen. Maybe, yeah, who is knows? Is someone going to run an AI? Like, is right, this... like is someone going <laughs> to dump this file and spend a whole bunch of Amazon credits to get into my infrastructure kind of deal, yeah. right? Like, who knows, right? So, yeah, if you want to use a different tool uh, that doesn't yeah. result in putting your secrets in the repo, no one is complaining about that. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we get it. We get it totally, <laughs> yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, totally. Get it. yeah. So cool. Um, cool, man. So, yeah. Someone, someone asked about like how does this fit in, um, to a life cycle. pipeline? Yeah, to a pipeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So this is so the the reason it's called Argo CD is because it's a delivery system, right? Argo mm -hmm. CD, Flux CD. Um. You know, because you can do a lot of these a lot of these principles uh, using like a Jenkins pipeline, right? And just yeah. having Jenkins. Having Jenkins um, just fire everything. Do it. Do it for you, right? right. Um, you can do it that way. Like, there's no, you know, there's the there's no hard and fast answer. But the idea is that for your CI, you're still doing it either via via Jenkins. Everyone's doing it via Jenkins. Um, Tecton people are doing starting to do things with Tecton now. Love me some to Tecton. Be, yeah, do that 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 iteration, and then when it's finally time to deploy, it's as simple as merging that branch to whatever right. Argo CD is monitoring, right? Like whatever yeah, branch. So you, if, if you set up the branches Twitch, you know, any kind of forks or changes that come in, get merged to Twitch and then Argo CD updates everything. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the, 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 the Argo CD becomes the, the deployment mechanism, right? So right. Um, it becomes how you deploy now. Right. So that's the, it, 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 it it's, it's, it's towards the end of your pipeline, right? Mm. So you're you're still yeah. doing, you know, your your uh, your Maven builds the way you would normally be doing. You're oh still yeah, yeah. you're still compiling stuff. your code. You're still put packaging everything up the way you yeah. need it. You still all that stuff still happens. This is the the we're getting it out yeah. the door now, right? Like yeah, I guess. It. 
I guess now, you know, towards the end, you're building a container and then you're like patching a, you know, a, a Git repo and then you merge it and then get magic, right? As, as you see it. Um, so can so, you, there's a question in chat from Jay Warnica. Could you schedule pools? Could you, yes, you could create a cron job, yeah. I guess, to fire Argo, like a Kubernetes cron job. Yes, you can yeah. schedule those. You can schedule um, pools. Um, I are think there web you, hooks? Yeah, I think you can. Yes, there, there are web hooks. Um, to, 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 I saw that I saw this the other day while I was playing with it. Um, but there are web hooks that you can hit in order to trigger. So like mm -hmm. instead of it pulling, as soon as someone merges it, it'll it'll do a it'll hit that web hook and it'll it'll initiate. Um, yeah. Um, but that's another thing you got to keep secret is your web hooks. Yeah. Because you don't want someone to like you know spam your application, <laughs> crush your infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. There was. Um, I need to find it. I need to. It was, um, but yeah, you can do like web hooks. You can do when you're doing a um, an automatic sync policy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if it's automatic, what, it yeah. just goes. It just goes, yeah. But if you, yeah. you can, you set it to manual, and then uh, you can have web hooks hit um, the web hooks at the end. So yeah, so, awesome, yeah. cool, man. Cool, Any other cool. questions from the audience out there yeah. in Twitch land? Um, Related back to my question about Tecton. I'm sorry, Ricardo, I didn't see your question about Tecton. I'll yeah. scroll up real quick. Uh, I'm not seeing anything we didn't answer. Lots of help from the chat, which we always appreciate. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, someone says if a continuous pull will cause additional load on the API server. So, um, not so it, it uses so the Kubernetes. Reconcile yeah. loop, right? So right. It's, like it's, it's not any it's different. Watching than, for events. And yes. when it sees an event, that's when it fires. Yeah, it's not any different than watching for pods, right? I guess right. Like if a pod it's, goes it's, down, it's just going to pick it back up, right? Same yeah. premise. So, yeah, exact same premise. Um, mm -hmm. So, you got the, uh, so it's an additional load in that, not any different than like watching for pods. Yes. Correct. So. All right. Awesome. Let's uh, let's wrap this up. How about that? Yep. You cool with that? Yeah. No. That's that's it's it's good. it's good. Okay. So like in an hour, like just about an hour, I'll be back on here with a large group of awesome people for uh, what's new in OpenShift four four for developers. So if you're writing code yep. every day on OpenShift, definitely join us here at the seventeen hundred UTC, uh, one p.m. Eastern. Uh, and then later today, uh, 3 o'clock p.m., uh, 1900 UTC, we are going to break down the uh, OpenShift cluster autoscaler. So, yes, that's yeah. Gonna be yeah, Eric's going to go through that. That's going to be really cool. Eric's going to go through that, and I'm going to play the humble idiot on that one because, you know, because... To be honest with you, if, so it's it's if, a tough job, but someone has to do it, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is this is what I do on this show. I play the humble uh, idiot. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah. Anyways, so thank you all for tuning in. Um, there are also uh, our Dev Nation friends. I want to give a shout out to them real quick because uh, they are doing some really really great work. If you're interested, you know, in like Kubernetes and how to get better at doing these things, check out Dev Nation. They yeah. run uh, actual like master courses, is what they call them. And like our team works very hard on packaging up this this information, making it very consumable and very easy to to, to, to get in this kind of yeah. personalized format. So check out dn.dev slash yeah. upcoming. We've got some of some of our teammates. Christian are going to be doing one of those nice. Kubernetes ones uh, here pretty soon. Cool. And cool. then, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff upcoming there. So definitely check. Yeah, that I think out. Landon's doing one, and yeah, yeah Landon's so doing one. Know. Jafar, I think, is in one. Eric's in one. I yeah, want Jafar so. to do a French one in French. In French. Yeah, I mean, they do multiple language. Yeah. Multiple so, I'm, I'm gonna, so yeah. even though I'm, I won't understand it, I want to drop in just so I can see it. Just right. So can. <laughs> like it, it would just sound good. Right? <laughs> it would just cool. Yeah. Exactly. It would be nice to hear something different. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, also, uh, when in doubt, like if you want to try OpenShift, kick the tires, light the fires, openshift.com slash try. try. Like yep. you can get anything from it running on your laptop to it running on your data center out of openshift.com slash try. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Make sure there... you, you sign up for the developer, developers.redhat.com. Uh, right. yeah. As soon as you get that, you can get access to OpenShift, openshift.com slash try. Mm -hmm. 
um, and install it on your laptop, install it on AWS, bare metal, whatever. So, yep. yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sasha and Cloud99 asked, is there a way to ask questions on recordings in an offline way All the se- if all the sessions are recorded? Um, comments on the recordings i would assume comments. i don't know you can, if... you can reach you can um, um feel free to like hit us up like on tweet, twitter or yeah you can you can tweet us email yeah. yeah twitter um or i'm on the kubernetes slack um, as am i as yeah so Chris you Short. can so yeah so I'll, I'll answer there if i have a, a few free cycles so cool mm-hmm. yeah I definitely you, on the kubernetes yeah. slack both of us are definitely out on the twitter lands and emails so feel, please feel free to uh, hit us up Cool, man. Right. You have a great rest of your day, and Me I will uh, I will send this out. All right. Thank you, everyone. Well, uh, until next time.